Grace and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father, from our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament lesson, God is angry with his people because they are acting humbly, they are fasting, and doing all sorts of things to make themselves look religious. But God, who searches the heart, gives us a different view. Behold, as you fast, you seek your own pleasure. Years ago, when I was in the army, Another soldier asked another soldier, what are you giving up for Lent? And he said, well, I'm going to give up Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> he had never been even within a hundred miles, so what was he giving up? The Bible says God searches the heart. It is not what we do, but how and why we do it. So let's say, for example, a robber decides to rob a convenience store, and so he has this knife, he goes in there, and he threatens, and the clerk secretly presses a button. Another robber, not knowing that the first one is, comes in with a gun, and he starts brandishing, getting the guy with the knife, throws the knife down, and runs away. The police arrive, arrest the first guy, and thank the second guy for stopping the robbery. <laughs> the right thing for the wrong reason. Our text says, fasting like yours for this day will not make your voice be heard from me. Fasting is the idea of giving up something, giving up something for yourself. Now, not like on a diet, we need to do that, but the idea of making atonement, of the idea of bringing you closer to God. In 1 Kings chapter 21, we read where Jezebel wanted a solemn fast declared for a terrible reason. However, in Joel, we read the exact same words, now for the right reason, to lament for the sins of Israel. Jesus spoke about false piety. He said in Matthew, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them, if you do, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have already received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be done in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Our text says, is this the kind of fast I have chosen only for a day to humble yourselves? And if bowing your head like a reed and lying on sackcloth and ashes, is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to me? In other words, live like a heathen for six days and then come to church and sing to yourself, how great I am, how great I am. Again, Jesus. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said to a little boy, come here. And then he says, I tell you that unless you become like a child, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. And whoever humbles himself like a child will be called the greatest in heaven. Philippians, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus, who, in being in the very nature of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being found in human likeness. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. So what do we have here? Not a life that says, look at me, I'm such a good person. I belong to the church, I, I go every Sunday, I give tithes and so forth. The Pharisee. A life that draws attention to yourself is not a godly life. <coughs> You are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. But what do you know about too much salt? Not very good. 
My very first meal that I ever cooked, I'd wash my mother, I was nine years old, and she went away for the morning, gonna come home at lunch. And so I did what she did, I browned the hamburger, I put in the uh, pinto beans, added some tomato soup and sauce, then came to salt. My mother always salted. And I thought, well, she knows what she's doing, and I don't. So I'm going to measure. So I got a tablespoon out there, and I measured it carefully. <laughs> and I put it in. Oh, it looked beautiful. My mother was so pleased. And then she took the first bite, and her lips almost covered her whole face. <laughs> I had done the right thing in the wrong way. It doesn't help. When I think of too much salt in the religious sense, I think of religious hypocrites and religious fanatics. They do not make disciples for Christ, but for themselves. A long time ago, I attended a Protestant church in Ireland. You know, that's a Catholic country. So it was small, the people were friendly, very nice service. And on the way out, I made the mistake of underhandedly criticizing the small number of people. I said, have you ever heard of some of the things we're doing in America called church growth? And he opened his mouth and he said unto me, <laughs> any fool can fill a church, but not everybody can make disciples of Christ. Think of Joel Osteen. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 20,000 people every Sunday. Think of the gathering. Boy, they were packing them in. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves, but to Jesus. And we often fail. Now, in fairness to the gathering, I heard from one of their elders, he said, you know, our pastor has really changed. And I've noticed those little signs on the, on the way in 441. They say, we're all about Jesus. You remember what he used to say? We're all about people. Well, he's changed. Give him credit. Now, likewise, maybe if you had a one-on-one -on -one with Joel Osteen, he might say that, well, listen, I close my services by saying go to a Bible-based church. Maybe there's a holy gospel. And I know that I'm not really preaching Christ and Him crucified, but at least I'm gathering their attention so that I can send them to a church. Maybe he say that, and maybe not. But let's not worry about others, but about ourselves. I'm going to talk about myself. I've done some things in secret and then walked away quietly, kind of like the Lone Ranger. You know, he was always doing good for other people, and then he'd slip away. hi oh, silver, away. And people would say, who's that masked man? I've done a few of those things, but I've also tooted my horn once, twice. Three times. <laughs> a whole lot of times. Sometimes I preach sermons in your face because I know you need to hear it, you bunch of sinners. Shape up! <laughs> Other times I know there's something going on and I kind of shied away from it because I was a chicken. And how about the good things that you've done? Have they been in secret? Or were you looking for that praise, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You're such a good church member. Our text says, now, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of a yoke, to set up the oppressed free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe him, and turn not away from your own flesh and blood, then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will appear quickly. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call upon the Lord, and He will answer. You will cry for help, and He will say, Here am I. Does this remind you of what Jesus said about the last day? What was he going to say? I was a stranger, and you took me in. Lord, we didn't, we didn't, we don't remember that. We didn't do that. I was naked, and you clothed me. I don't remember that. Uh, you, I was hungry, you fed me, thirsty, you gave me a drink, sick and in prison, and you came. We don't remember. We did it out of kindness without thinking about it. 
deep down, that's what we want to do. We want to let our light so shine before men so they can see good works and give glory to the Father. And when people say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant, we'll answer with St. Paul. Nevertheless, it wasn't me, it was Christ in me that does the good works. We do it for the gospel. For God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, no longer counting sins and trespasses against us. The sin of self-righteousness, the sin of pride, the sin of saying, look at me, how good I am. The sin that we do to try to fool others about how nice we are. Then, no longer being that way, our song becomes, how great thou art, how great thou art. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.